This short animated video explains the basic concept of central limit theorem in statistics with help of some relevant examples. So please don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax and enjoy this video on central limit theorem. To understand this concept of central limit theorem, let us first understand these two terms, population and sample. Sample. Sample is a small group of members selected from a population to represent the population. It is basically a subset of a population. While population, on another hand, is a group from which the sample is drawn. Exact population will depend upon the scope of the study. Coming back to our main topic of central limit theorem. So this is one of the most uh, powerful concept of statistic inference and is often used in conjunction with law of large numbers. Central lim limit theorem states that sampling distribution of sample mean approaches in normal distribution as a sample size gets larger, no matter what is the shape of a population distribution. Means as we go on increasing the samples, especially the large ones, your graph of sample mean will look more like a normal distribution. This fact hold especially true for when sample size is greater than 30. So as we increase the number of samples from 30 to 50 to 100, the graph of sample means will move toward a normal distribution. So when n is less than 30, central limit theorem does not apply here. The sampling distribution will follow a similar distribution to that of a population. Therefore, the sampling distribution will only be normal if the population distribution is also normal. But when n is greater than 30 or equal to 30, central limit theorem applies here. The sampling distribution will approximately follow a normal distribution. So in short, if your sample size is less than 30, your central limit theorem will not apply and the sampling distribution will follow what we have for distribution for a population. And when it is greater than 30, it will follow a normal distribution irrespective of what is the distribution that we have for population. An essential component of central limit theorem is that average of your sample mean will be there as population mean. In other words, add up the mean of all your samples, find the average of it, and then the average will be your actual population mean. Similarly, if you find the average of all the standard deviations in your sample, you will find the actual standard deviation for your population. So as per the theorem, the relationship between the shape of population distribution and the shape of sampling distribution of a mean is known as the central limit theorem. The significance of a central limit theorem is that it permits us to use the sample statistics to make the inference about population parameters without knowing anything about the shape of the frequency distribution of that population. Let's take an example of a fair rolling dice. The more time each person roll a dice, more likely the shape of distribution of a mean tends to look like a normally distributed graph. So central limit theorem is applicable for sufficiently large sample size as I just discussed previously when n is greater than 30. The formula is z equal to x minus mu by sigma. This is the formula for that we use for central limit theorem. And the sample size. So as the sample size gets large, the sampling distribution becomes almost normal regardless of the shape of the population. So if your population distribution is flat, bimodal, unimodal, poison distribution, or don't follow any kind of distribution, your end result would be if you take a sample from that population, your end result will always be a normal distribution. So if you take the same graph where you have a smaller sample size, 
as you go on increasing the larger sample size, as the sample size gets large enough, the sampling distribution becomes almost normal regardless of the shape of the populations. That is how I explained through graphically here. Let's take an example to understand this concept. There are 250 cats at a show where the average weight of cat is 12 kg with standard deviation of 8 kg. Now if we choose 4 samples, then what is the probability that the average weight of cat is greater than 10 kg and less than 25 kg? This is the problem statement that we have in our hand. Now our mean of the population mu is 12 kg that is given in the statement. Standard deviation is 8 kg, which is also given in the statement. We have four samples, so n equal to 4. We apply the stand, center limit theorem formula, z equal to x minus mu by sigma x, where mu denotes the population mean, sigma denotes the population standard deviation, mu x denotes the sample mean, sigma x denotes the sample standard deviation, and n denotes the sample of size. Now we are given sigma x, which is under root sigma by under root, root of n. So we got sigma standard deviation, which is given as 8 divided by under root of n, n as 4. So we apply the normal curve here. We'll apply the limits 12 as mean and 10 and 25 as the upper and lower limit that is given in the statement. Now z at 25. So we add the formula x minus mu by sigma 25 at upper limit minus mean which is 12 divided by 8 which is standard deviation divided by under root of n that we have calculated. So we get 13 divided by 4 and z as 3.25. Now we calculate at lower limit as well. So 10 minus 12 divided by same value that is 8 by under root 4. z at 10 we get as minus 0.5. Now we go back to z table. For z 25, we get 3.25. We will look at for search for this value 3.2 in the horizontal column and 0.05 in the vertical column. At the intersection, we get 0.9994, which is a z value at 3.25. Now, since area under the curve is 1, and half of it will be 0.5. So we subtract it from 0.5. So we get 0.494, the value of z at 3.25. Now we calculate for 10, z10 at minus 0.5. So point, minus 0.5 at 0 0.5 is same value. We search for 0 0.5, 0 0.0. So we get 0.6915. Again, since area under the curve is 1, half of it would be 0.5, so we subtract it from 0.5 and we get 0.1915. So now the both, both these has to be added and we get 0.6855, which is that is the probability that average weight is between 10 and 25 kg is 68.15% or 0.5%. It's the quiz time now. Let's see how much you have understood this concept of central limit theorem. First question, the standard error is always non-negative. A, true, B, false. Second question, sampling error increases as we increase the sample size. A, true, B, false. You can leave your answers in the comment section below.